All right, so you should have already done this because it's going to take a moment, like I said before the break. I've made a copy of my basic project. Basic is, that's my starting template. I've made a copy. It's currently called basic temp, perhaps, or basic copy or whatever. But I want to rename that to be my SDCE. That new project, my SDCE, is going to be my project uh, from now on. This is going to be the final uh, the project with what I worked with last month. Just because I changed my folder name doesn't mean it changed anything about my actual app. So once you rename that to my SDCE, let's open that and let's edit the config file. So obviously this is the config file of the my SDCE project. We're going to have a lot of files called the same thing. The difference is which folder, which project are we opening them from. So I'm going to open the notepad and then I'm going to close notepad some of these other files that I don't need, like the index for the other project and the config for the other project. I just want to have the config file open for my SDCE project. Um, so here we're going to need to edit a few things. For example, line 2. We can leave the date the same there already. That doesn't quite matter. You maybe you leave it here until you're ready to finally publish. So whatever here. I'm going to leave that date the same. Version code, it's still 1. This is the first version code of this app. Okay, this app is not called Basic App anymore. It's going to be called My SDCE, and we'll spell it this cool way that you see sometimes. So uh, I'm going to call it my SDCE. Actually, to differentiate it from everyone else's, because everyone's working on the same sort of thing, let's call it with your last name. So whatever your last name is, my SDCE. That's the, the name that's going to appear be, below the icon. Description. This is no longer the correct one. We're going to say here the unofficial. San Diego Continuing Education App. Mine, uh, if you're using mine, then it has my fake email. Put in your fake email or real email of your own particular company. So this is going to be I don't know, admin at victor.com and the ref victor.com, whatever. Put in something of yours because, again, now you should sort of be thinking about this. This is going to be your project. Yes, it will look exactly the same as your neighbors, but we will have a point, then we will customize the colors and all of that. It's still the very basic gray, black, and white. You might want yellow colors and, and oranges and all of those colors. We're going to do that a little later. Yes? The one up here? As I said a moment ago, we could, but we could wait until the ver until we're ready to finally publish it because we're going to work on it for several more days. So maybe we should wait until the, the final version, ready to publish, and then we'll edit that date. Line 8, this is my particular company. Put your company, make up a company. You are a real developer the moment you make up a company for yourself. You don't have to go and get a real license. You don't have to go to City Hall and register and all of that. You are a developer as soon as you say you are, as soon as you make up a name and maybe make a logo. Uh, so this is just going to be Victor Apps, whatever you want. Those are the things that I changed here. Save that. In command prompt, remember to switch over to the other project. I'm still in basic. So cd back, cd dot dot. On my drive, I've got basic test and my sdce. Yes, you could also call that folder smith my sdce, but you're going to remember to type that. Make it easier on yourself. cd my sdce. So get out of the basic project. It's it's been set. That's going to be our template for future Android apps. All of these two weeks that we've been spending now 
we have this foundation that we'll be able to then quickly create more apps from that template. So switch to it, and all we'll do for the moment is just uh, Cordova build. I don't want to deploy it anywhere and waste that time. I just want to build it. Uh, this will prepare it, but not deploy it to any device. It should be pretty fast because we those files were already built, compiled on the basic project. Uh, here I just want to have it built so that when I add my next files, um, I'm ready to go. So as this builds, I'm going to do a preview to look at sheet 7. Let's look at sheet 7. This is import web app. Uh, 13, uh, 13 steps or so to import our project. I'm going to tell you them in general, then we'll do it together. So we're going to create a new project, which we have. It's waiting for us. My SDCE. In my SDCE, we currently have an index file. We don't want to delete that index file. It has some code that we need. So we're going to rename the existing index file to index2. Then we're going to go over to our project from last month. I'll remind you where that is in a moment. We're going to go to our project about last month and copy everything about it into the www folder. Also, I forgot to say, we're going to remove, we will remove the CSS, image, and JS folder of our current basic project. We don't need those files. We've got our own CSS, our own images, our own JavaScript. So we're going to remove those from the template file, but not the index. And we're going to copy all those files from last month into the project and copy and paste a few lines from index 2 into our new index. Um, I'll explain what those are, of course, but make a note. Item 6.2.1, we need to remember to add to last month's project we need to add the script that points to cordova.js. So as I previously said, we can actually just drag and drop our project from last month into the WW folder and it will work. But it won't work to access the camera, it won't work to access the GPS and the contacts and all of that phone stuff, unless we have that line. So we'll do that together, of course. We'll remove a couple of lines like this Apple web app thing that's no longer necessary. It's not a web app anymore. It's a real app. We need to do that to the DIR file also. The, the, the GPS uh, file. Then we won't need the index anymore. And then in the Kodika file, we need to do two things actually. Create an on-device ready function, Cordova is ready, and put back the uh, splash screen hide. And then we can build it and run it, and the project that we saw last month will come back to life as a full-fledged real app. Let's try it now. So when that was built, I'm going to close my config file in Notepad, and I'm going to rearrange my screens a little bit. We don't need Photoshop anymore. I'm going to close that to to free up some resources. Okay, so what I need, I'm going to open two windows. Um, I asked you earlier, copy the folder called mobile website start from the network. So I copied it to the desktop. And then I'm going to open the project of my SDCE. So I'm going to be referring to it that way from now on, the My SDCE project. That's the project that everyone should have based on the template. So I'm open the My SDCE folder, and like my instructions say, in the WW folder, delete the CSS folder, image folder, and JS folder. We have our own, not the index file. And again, to confirm, this is in the My SDCE project. Delete those resources there. Rename the index to be index2 or index old or whatever. We still need that one. It has some 
some code that we want. In the mobile website, project start from last month, copy everything, or cut, copy everything, and paste it into the MySDCE project. Everything. So now the www folder of the MySDCE project, which is based on the template, has all of the work from last month. If you weren't here last month, this is what we ended up with. And the temporary index file that was created from the template. I want to open both, well actually all three, of the index, dir file, and index2. You can click index and then hold control on the keyboard and control click dir and control click index 2 and then right click to open all three in, note, in notepad. I want to open index dir and index 2 in notepad plus plus all three of them. So open the three HTML files that you should have. So Notepad++ shows me there's my index, index2, and dir. I want to show these files side by side. I want to have the index and the dir on the left side and the index2 on the right side of Notepad. So you can right-click, index to tab, move to other view. And now they're side by side. We can't do three columns, unfortunately, it's just two columns. Um, on the index two, I'm going to collapse the whole section of the license, so just click that little minus sign next to the number two to hide that. And what we need to do from the index 2 is, I'm going to copy the, this whole comment because it's useful, and then we're going to copy the content security policy, format detection, MS application tap, viewport, but not the style sheet. I'm going to copy that and paste it right after UTF-8 character set. So maybe watch me a moment and then you'll do it. I'm going to select lines 22 to 34. And then on line 5, I'm going to paste all that. Then I'm going to delete some extra ones here. But paste all of that. I'm pasting that into the index file first. I'll do it in DIR, of course, also. But I'm going to paste it on line 5 of the index file last month's index file, the web app. So I pasted that. It's got the comment, the content security policy, format detection, MS tab highlight, viewport. And we've already got a viewport. This viewport here is actually a little bit better. The one that comes from Cordova. So delete lines 18 and 19 delete the old viewport, the comment too, I suppose. So delete the old viewport settings. They were not quite complete as the one we got from Cordova. So I'm deleting lines 18 and 19. This is coming from my sheet here. Uh, you'll copy and paste these items. Uh, paste it there. Note, replace the existing line of code with this end, so that's replacing the, the viewport. We've also got these two sections, Apple-friendly mobile device tweaks. 
So delete slide, delete lines 19, 20, and 21. Delete these meta tags about Apple devices, web apps. So 19, 20, and 21, delete those. Back on index two, at the very end, line 46, we're going to copy that line. This is the reference to Cordova.js. This is what allows us to do all of that camera, contacts, all of that stuff, all of the native functions. So copy that line. And we'll paste it after the existing, uh, what do I have? After the existing jQuery. This is, yeah, 6.2.1. Place this below jQuery mobile. Okay, so let's find our jQuery mobile.js line, which is line 29. Line 29. It's got jQuery and jQuery mobile, and there's an empty line there, line 30. Paste this. Now we've got the Cordova library. This does not matter at all, but sometimes everything matters in programming. Um, script source, script source, script type source. That's not necessary because we've got HTML5. It won't be it will not be detrimental to leave it or to remove it, but I'm going to remove it because to keep it all consistent. And sometimes when you're programming, you're a little obsessive. So, I'm going to obsess here. I'm going to remove type equals text javascript because it's HTML5, it's always javascript. I'm just going to shorten that down, free up a few bytes. That was not necessary to do, but I want to keep it consistent, personally. All right. Um, I'm going to save this. We'll do the dir file in a moment. I've got the index file. I've added the Cordova specific code. Next I want to switch over to the JavaScript file. Back on your on your project folder, remember last month all of our JavaScript was saved in this codica.extra.js file. So let's edit that codica.js file, the JavaScript file. Let's edit that in Notepad. We're going to add the all-important event listener for the device. So Kodika Extra JS, edit in Notepad. This is stuff we had previously. Uh, as I said, I added comments and such from last month. C took out some of the extra code, extraneous code that is. So um, what I want to do on line two is what I've got in my instruction here, number 11.1 and point .2. I'll do it on line 2. Give myself a little bit of extra space there on line 3, actually. Just give my, gave myself a little above and below, but a brand new line 3. And I'm going to type what I've got here on 11.1. Document dot uh, add event, capital E, listener, capital R, open, close parentheses, semicolon. This should be one of the very first things in, in your project. This is what will allow all of Cordova to function properly. We have to check, is the Cordova library, has it been loaded? Are the APIs, is the code ready? So we're waiting for an event. In the parentheses, the event that we're waiting for, in quotes, is called device ready. 
different events could happen. Devices paused, devices ready, devices closed, different, different uh, events. We're specifically waiting for the device ready event. After the quote, but inside the parentheses, comma, space. Well, we've got that device ready event, meaning all the code is ready. What do we want to do about it? We will um, have a function here. We'll call it on device ready. This is arbitrary. We can make up any function call here. We're making up one called on device ready. And you often read it in various tutorials. They often use on device ready. It can be anything, but we're using on device ready. And the uh, the way this is, you don't put the parentheses. This is going to be a function, but we don't put the parentheses here. That's just the way it is. Comma. One more thing. False. And that's another one. This is just the way it is because we're 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 saying false to the default behavior, I believe. But that's that's required. So one of the first JavaScript things that happens is is the device ready? If it is. Then we'll, then we'll run on device ready function. So on the next line, we need to define function on device ready. Open close parentheses, open close curly brace, semicolon. We need to explain this is what on device ready is. Um, we'll make it do two things. One in the, my documentation, just a simple console log that says Cordova is ready. But more, uh, more correctly, we'll also, we also have to reinstate the uh, splash screen hide because we deleted the original index file therefore our splash screen is still going to take 10 seconds again so we'll do that in a moment continuing here console.log open close parentheses just a simple message in quotes Cordova is ready And after that, we'll say navigator dot splash screen dot hide method. Okay, I think this is what we need for this point. Uh, we need to do something about the dir file. I haven't done it yet, don't worry. But then we added this code for the index file. We've got the Kodika file, JS. Save everything. And then I'm going to run this on both my emulator and my real device. Remember the trick to do both at once is Cordova emulate Android two ampersands and then the other command Cordova run Android so it will first do this command right afterward it'll do that command so it's not that they will both run at once actually that causes conflicts because then you're trying to access the files twice but it'll emulate, in my case, it'll emulate first and then it'll run on the device. You can switch these. You can do Cordova run Android and, and Cordova emulate Android. They're just chaining two commands together. Confirm, of course, that you are on the MySDCE project, or it's going to load your test one again, or your basic one, something. If all goes well, if all goes well, uh, what I what I should see on my emulator and real device is I'm going to see again the splash screen I was seeing a little while ago. It'll then cut after a, a couple seconds once everything is loaded. It might take a little longer because now we've got a more complex app. Once the splash screen is hidden, then it should show the project from last month, fully functional. You can go from screen to screen, animation, all that stuff we did last month, hopefully. If we do get this to work today, 
then when we come back next week we will then go on to the other advanced stuff that we want to do. We want to add um, the ability for the user to, uh, to save more complex data in a database and um, maybe a couple of other Cordova, cool Cordova things. There's my splash screen. One second. Launch success. A couple of things that I know won't work yet are the latest classes. If you click that, it might show up the classes, but what it did actually was it ejected me from the app to a web browser. We're going to deal with that so that within the app it loads up in a mini web browser. So that's, that kind of works, but not really. If I press back, it takes me back to the app, but actually I want to stay in the app. You might not see the difference, but there is a difference. Also, what at this point probably doesn't work is if you go over to PC screen, got some text here, there's a broken picture because that is trying to load a picture from Wikipedia. I'll address that in a moment. Um, what else? Uh, I believe the DIR doesn't quite work yet either because we need to finish upgrading that one. Let's see, about SDC. Here it is loading up in my real device. One, two, done. I can go screen to screen. Looks really nice on my device. Very responsive. Nice pop ups. So here. Get directions, click that. I think this won't load it up for, for a reason that I have in a moment. Let me see here, about SDCE, get directions. It loads the screen, but not the map yet. If I have a solution for that, mm -hmm. then we'll go back. We can test the customize. Actually, customize won't work, and that's also for the same reason. I'll explain why in a moment. Uh, so overall, the app in general comes through with a few things, of course, that are not quite there yet. What's, what's quite not working yet is, for example, the customize. Remember, in the purely web version, you click customize, a pop-up appears, you type in your name, your name then gets added throughout the app. It'll say, uh, Welcome Victor. It'll say, Take an Art Class Victor. It'll say, Learn Computers Victor. That's not working because of what I said previously at the be very beginning of the day. Line 14 of the index file. It's, it's preventing inline JavaScript. It's not letting any JavaScript work for security reasons, inline JavaScript. So therefore, none of that is working there. Two ways to fix it. One is what it's saying here, add the unsafe inline into the right after the default source. Um, as I was testing it on a bunch of devices, on some it worked, some it didn't. The exact same code for different devices didn't quite work consistently. What did work consistent, consistently, and it's not the best answer, is to delete or comment that line. Then there will be no extra security policy in place, and then it will work perfectly. That potentially opens, up, opens us up to security vulnerabilities, however. So I think there's something about the Cordova 5.1 that's a little, that still has a couple bugs. So hopefully there will be a fix for that, but I'm going to try both ways. It's not quite working on my devices yet, so I'm going to try the first way. On line 14, default source, I'm going to add unsafe-inline. And I will run those both again.
if this worked, what should happen is that the picture inside of the, the computer classes should show up. The pictures that I'm pulling from Wikipedia, they should show up. Because now we, we're saying, okay, let that unsafe content load. That's one thing. What should then work is the customize button asking you for your name. That should work. The DIR probably doesn't work yet because we haven't touched the DIR file yet. It still has just the original code from last month. If it doesn't work, for the time being, I'm going to remove, I'm going to comment that line out. I'm going to remove that CSP, the content security policy line, for the moment, until, there's a, until we figure out really what's going on. But let's see what we get. So for some of you, this is taking like five seconds to compile. I envy you. Mine's taking a while because I'm running a lot of stuff. The recorder and everything. What's that? Great. Hopefully for me too. I'm going to go to computers, PC, pictures not loading, but let's go back to about custom. There that is at least. Welcome, Victor. Take a class, Victor. No, computers, Victor. Okay, good. But not the external picture. We'll see what happens on my real device. Uh, but. I believe there is a property, because we've got style source, we can use unsafe CSS. We've got media source, which what, which what I would assume is the pictures, maybe video. And then we've got default, which should be a catch-all. But I believe there's one that's called something like maybe image-source, and then we would add unsafe inline. But let's see here. I go to computers, I go to PC, and no, it doesn't load up the external picture, but if I go over to About, Customize, yes, it pops up. What's your name? So, Victor, enter that, and it shows my name. So in my app, on my device, it's showing the name that I typed. So it is asking me, so that inline JavaScript is working. There it is. What's your name? That was not working a moment ago. Again, to reiterate, we have the security policy in the latest versions of Cordova that restricts some things. And it was restricting any inline JavaScript. That's why that would not work. The reason I copied also the comment is because it has some links that might help me figure this out. And as I was reading them, I believe I saw more detail. What I've got here is sort of a proof of concept in that I'm trying to load an external graphic right there. I don't need to. I could have downloaded it from Wikipedia, no problem, then it's internal. But sometimes I need to load an external resource, and that's why we have this whitelist that one line there that is preventing that or approving it for security to connect to external resources. Because in theory, if I'm trying to connect to some external resource and it's not a secure resource, someone could put in some malicious code there and now that code is being run in my app because I've allowed it. That's why it's restrictive at this point, not allowing any inline JavaScript. But for us, that's too restrictive. And anyway, we're not connecting, we're not loading up that JavaScript from a server. We're loading it up from within our app, so that's much more secure. If I had that JavaScript up on my server, my server gets hacked and I never knew about it, and someone put in their own version of that JavaScript and my app is accessing, accessing that compromised JavaScript, my whole app is compromised, my users are compromised, so that's why it's disabled.
Also see we have here script source. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, I think I'll end the main lecture at this point. I've got most of my project from last month loading up. Still need some work, but we'll do that next time, like the DIR file. Uh, I'm going to end the main lecture, put my code into the network, just so that you can compare it. And now we're we're going to be working on them on your unique my SDCE project. So we'll do some lab time and then we'll wrap it up.